Hello and welcome to another episode of Piano TV. So today, as a follow-up video to the two videos on Baroque music that we did, which I'll link to on the screen here with some editing magic, video one and video two, I thought it would be appropriate to do a composition that was written in the Baroque period. So we're not gonna do a crazy difficult piece. This is gonna be around a grade one level, so playable for people who have been at the piano for like, I don't know, anywhere from six months to two years, depending on how, I don't know, much you practice. This piece is by a guy named Telemann, who we're going to talk about in a minute, and it is his Fantasia in G minor, not the whole thing, just a smaller section of it. So what we're going to do in this video is we're going to do a little bit of a musical, musical analysis. We're going to listen to an example of it on the piano. There's sheet music linked below if you want to learn it, and we'll talk a little bit about the backstory. So let's get started. <laughs> Before we get into the nitty gritty, I just want to talk a little bit about Baroque music. So in the previous video on Baroque music, what we talked about a bit is that it's so different from modern music. So because of that, it can be really difficult to play just because it's foreign. So because of this, I like to sort of like gently ease into the Baroque music experience. So instead of like diving straight to the Bach, I like to kind of, I don't know, yeah, just like take little stepping stones to get to that point. So as a little bit of perspective, I already mentioned the song is going to be at a grade one level and most Bach pieces start at a minimum of about a grade three level. So that just gives you a little bit of an idea. All right. So backstory time. First of all, Telemann was a pretty cool guy and you don't really hear about him anymore because he's not popular in modern times. Although in his heyday, he was right up there with guys like Bach and Handel, who were his contemporaries. And actually, they were friends too. And Bach liked Telemann so much that he named one of his kids after him. So Telemann's full name, George Philip Telemann. Bach named one of his sons, Carl Philip Emmanuel Bach. I don't know why they had so many names. But anyway, they were all friends. They were all German composers who lived around the same time. So of course they would know each other. Telemann was a songwriting powerhouse and he composed over 3000 works, which is just mind boggling. And unfortunately, a lot of those works don't exist anymore. They've just kind of been lost due to the ravages of time. But there are still some good pieces that we can study, like this one we're gonna do today. Since the particular piece we're looking at today is a Fantasia, I wanna just talk for a second about what a Fantasia actually is and it's really quite simple so unlike different song forms like the minuet or the gavotte or other things like that a fantasia doesn't have a form doesn't have like any rules because it's based on the principle of improvisation which just means that the composer made something up as they went and then made a song out of it and then they called it a fantasia so it's very free form so this fantasia is specifically called fantasia in g minor twv 3317. So that's a lot of stuff to remember. So let's break it down because we don't usually talk about cataloging systems, but I kind of want to because it can be really, really confusing. So if you've ever played a song and has like OP72 in front of it or, or something like that, OP stands for opus. And that's a really common way of cataloging music. But some guys like Telebin have their own like completely different cataloging system. So it can just be a little tough to keep track of. So TWV is Telemann's cataloging system and every number. So in this case, we're looking at his 33rd category. Every number is like a different category of music. So for example, his TWV 39 is a collection of all of his lute music and TWV 32 is a collection of all of his harpsichord suites and so on. So when it says TWV 33 17, what that means is this is his 17th composition in his 33rd category. Make sense? So just a couple other quick backstory notes before we get to the piano and get to playing the piece itself. So first of all, this piece was written in 1732 when Telemann was in his 50s, and this was written towards the end of the Baroque era. So some of his fantasias are considered transitional from Baroque style to classical style. It was originally composed for the harpsichord because pianos weren't quite a thing yet. They were just like brand new being developed. So that does influence how we interpret it on the piano. So we're not going to play with like crazy wild Chopin dynamics or anything like that. We want to play in a little bit more of a restrained matter with more sudden changes in dynamics as is more characteristic of harpsichord style. So anyway, let's get to the piano.
Okay, so let's go hunting for patterns in the music now. So take a look at the first line and the second line. I want you to look at it and figure out if they're the same or if they're different. So if you said they're the same, you would basically be correct. All of the notes are exactly the same. The only thing that changes is this dynamic, the MF, the mezzo forte, and the mezzo piano. So what composers will do sometimes if they're doing the exact same line twice in a row is they'll change up the dynamic so at least something's different. And you'll want to do that when you play through it or else it just gets a little repetitive sounding. All right, so let's look at the last two lines now and see if you can find any patterns here. So again, I want you to look at these two lines. Are they the same or are they different? I'm giving you a little, little pause so you can actually look at it. If you said they're not the same, you would be correct, but they have a lot in common. If you look at the right hand, it's almost completely identical until we get to that very last note. And whereas the left hand kind of changes towards the last two bars, but it's not as different as it looks. So. This note right here, that crazy ledger line note, is an E flat. And if we take a look on that same note on the last line, this is also an E flat. The only difference is this one is an octave lower. And then you'll see it follows the same pattern, E flat, D, C, B flat, C, D, B flat. And this is almost identical, except the very last note, like the right hand, is just a little bit different. So the pattern of this song is that line one and two, and three and four are both pretty much the same. And of course you got these dynamic marks to switch them up a bit so it's not like directly identical. So let's do a quick analysis of this piece. So first of all, let's look at the Italian markings. We've just got a couple things here. So Allegro Moderato, this is our tempo marking, which is telling us how fast to play it. So Allegro means fast, Moderato, you can probably figure this out by yourself, means moderately. So put together, it just means to play moderately fast. The only other Italian in this piece would be the dynamic markings, the MF and MP, which is Italian uh, mezzo forte, mezzo piano. And these are our dynamic markings telling us to play medium loud and medium quiet. I like to talk about these things right from the get go because I feel like they're the most likely to be ignored. I don't know what it is about dynamics, but like, I don't know, they just become part of the scenery. So do take note of them and I would really recommend like play with them right from the beginning, even when you're just starting, even if it seems like an extra step. Okay, so let's take a look at the key signature, which I believe is a new one for us, but we can figure this out because there's two flats. And if you take a look at the lines and spaces that the flats are on, you have one right there and one right there. So this note is a B and this note is an E. So what this means is that in this song, you're, you gotta watch out for B flats and E flats. Now as for what scale that's based on, well, without getting into like a huge discussion on it, the B flat major scale, has this key signature. B flat major scale has a B flat and an E flat. But if you recall, every major scale has like an evil minor sounding counterpart. And I mean, you might have noticed this from the title, but the song isn't in the key of B flat major. It's actually in the key of G minor. And G minor has the same key signature as B flat major. So they both have two flats, a B flat and an E flat. This piece is a great gateway to Baroque music just because it's not too crazy. As we talked about in the previous Baroque video, one major feature of the keyboard style is that the left hand and right hand are basically off on their own tracks, completely independent of each other instead of the more modern chord and melody thing. So in this piece, the lines are independent. I could play each line individually and both hands do have a tune to them, but the parts aren't too complex or too different. So even if I play the left hand by itself, it still has a little bit of a tune to it, especially when we get into the third line, kind of like a little walking pattern, but it's not terribly complex. And that's why I love teaching this song to grade one level students right out of the gates, because it's a good starting point to branch out from into more difficult Baroque music. Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you have a lot of fun learning this piece. And if you want a little bit more information, I'll leave some links down in the description bar below. So I'm gonna leave links to the Baroque music videos that we just did here. And I'll also leave a link to the full sheet music collection of like the entire Fantasia if you wanna take a look at it, as well as just like our selection that we were working on today that you can download for free. All right, have fun, I will catch you later. Hello, <laughs> hello.